CJA is an international human rights organization that is dedicated to deterring torture and other severe human rights abuses, just the type of crimes that happen under the Khmer Rouge. And because of our work, we've developed quite an expertise in bringing these kinds of cases, which is why I think Lekina approached us to work with you all in this case. A little bit about the court. Um, what's very, it's a very unique court in that it's a combination of Cambodia um, and Cambodian law and international law and the UN. And it was established um, specifically to prosecute those who are most responsible under the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, this is the courthouse here, and we, um, as part of Becoming more familiar with this case, we took a trip to Phnom Penh last year um, and met with a lot of the key uh, officials and court staff. So as I mentioned, it's a mix of Cambodian law and international law, which is, which is really quite interesting. Um, all of the offices within the court have an international component and a Cambodian component. So for example, in the prosecutor's office, there's a lead international lawyer, um, a fellow from uh, the UK, and a lead Cambodian lawyer. Um, likewise, uh, the judges who are going to hear the evidence in case number two, the trial chamber, there are three Cambodian judges and two international judges. In order for one of their decisions to be binding, you have to have uh, at least four judges agree which means that neither the Cambodians by themselves nor the international judges by themselves can make a decision. They really have to um, try to forge a consensus. So the, the particular crimes that are being considered by the court include crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide, and crimes under Cambodian law. Starting off with crimes under Cambodian law, they'll, they'll seem familiar. It's the similar types of crimes that you might know here in the United States. Uh, murder and rape, um, the killings, um, forcing people from their homes, slavery, torture, um, and so forth. That's, that's what we would consider a crime against humanity. Um, war crimes have a lot of the same components. Um, the difference there is that it needs to occur during some type of armed <coughs> conflict. In case number one, uh, the court already decided that um, during the Khmer Rouge period, Cambodia and Vietnam, that there was such a conflict. So I think that is pretty much going to be established going forward in case number two. Just a little bit about case number one, which just concluded last summer with the conviction of Doig for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Um, as you know, he was the chief of S21, Tuol Sloan Prison in Phnom Penh. Um, he was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Because of time that he's already served, his remaining prison sentence is actually 19 years. Um, he has appealed his sentence, saying that he shouldn't have been tried at all because he was not a senior member of the Khmer Rouge. The prosecutors have also appealed, saying that the sentence was too lenient and that he should have been given a, a greater punishment. International court that lets the survivors participate directly in the trial. So this is historic. So the things that you guys did with Asterisk is uh, is establishing history for these international courts. The court finds that survivor participation is so important that they created a separate unit called the victim support section. Now the victim support section is supposed to help the survivors participate in the trial. They're also going to be working on projects with organizations like Asterisk and CJA um, in developing projects that help benefit the survivors and support the survivors in Cambodia and overseas. So most of you who submitted your victim information form, you applied to either be a civil party or you submitted your evidence as a complaint. A civil party is somebody who, in their testimony, indicated that they were directly harmed by the crimes that are being investigated by the court. Once those people are admitted, they're given a lot of rights during the trial. They have a right to a lawyer, like myself. 
Um, they can testify in the court. They can ask questions of the witnesses and the experts through their attorney. So it's very important that you tell me some of the questions you have to ask in the court, and we can ask those questions during the trial. Um, they can also request an award at the end of the judgment. This is called a reparation. So the other type of participation is as a complainant. This is when you submitted your testimony in your victim information form, but you just want your testimony to be evidence before the court. You don't want to participate during the trial, and you don't want to have a lawyer um, working for you during the trial. The court actually received about 8,000 victim information forms. So that's 8,000 people submitted their testimony to the court. Um, most of those people were in Cambodia. Uh, I think about 1,000 submitted outside, but only 143 civil parties applied from outside of Cambodia. 4,000 civil parties applied in Cambodia, and about half of those people were admitted. So there are going to be 2,000 parties during the trial that are civil parties. Everybody else is a complainant. So everybody else has submitted their evidence to the court and that's all gonna be in the file that can be used by the prosecutors or the judges or for further investigation. So Astrid collected 170 different testimonies to submit to the court. 41 of these were submitted as civil party applications and 30 were actually admitted by the court as a civil party. CJA has appealed on behalf of those 11 people who weren't admitted as a civil party. So before our civil parties all moved to the United States, the majority of them are from Phnom Penh. Um, the second highest province where our civil parties are from is Batambang. And they, where our civil parties currently reside is mostly on the coast. So Massachusetts has the highest number of survivors that are going to be parties in the court and then Pennsylvania, and then California. So some people ask us, why were some civil party applications rejected? I mean, everyone was a victim of the Khmer Rouge, so how can they not be a party in the court? The court is focusing on very specific crimes during this upcoming trial, and so they only admitted people who have evidence of those crimes. These crimes include being forced out of your home um, in Phnom Penh on April 1975, some people were forced to move to the Northwest Zone in 1976. Other people were forced to marry people against their will. These are some of the crimes that are gonna be tried in the upcoming trial, and so the court wants only evidence of these crimes at this time. Because there's so much evidence in this trial, they've hired two attorneys to represent all the survivors in court at all times. Different groups will still be represented by their individual lawyer, like CJA will still be working with all of the asterisk survivors, but we will be sharing the information with those two lead attorneys. Whenever there's an issue at trial that um, pertains to our civil parties directly, then we will be invited to speak on their behalf in court. Um, we are so honored and so grateful that you chose to spend the day sharing your stories with us. It really is an honor to represent you. And um, like I said last time, she made a promise that she would get the forms to the court. And now I'm here to make a promise that we will um, advocate as uh, forcefully as we can on your behalf and that your voices will certainly be heard in this upcoming case.